You may or may not have been surprised by the recent reporting that depression is not caused by low levels of serotonin or chemical imbalances in the brain. But in fact, this isn't news at all. Researchers have known this since at least the 1990s. Uh, however, antidepressants do seem to work for some people and provide some relief from the symptoms of depression. And I thought it would be useful to share some insights that would help us to make sense of this situation. But to do that, we need to understand the relationship between serotonin and a kind of sleep called REM sleep. REM stands for rapid eye movement, and it's the kind of sleep where most of our dreaming takes place. Now, we've also known since the 70s and 80s that people, when they experience depression, dream twice as much as people who are not experiencing depression. As much as 40 to 50% of the night can be spent in REM sleep where they're dreaming very intensely. Uh, that's exhausting, burns off huge amounts of the brain's energy and causes people to wake up low in mood and lacking in motivation the next day, in other words, with the symptoms of depression. And where serotonin enters the picture is that serotonin's role is to switch off REM sleep. When serotonin molecules are projecting from the rafe nuclei in our brainstem throughout rivers in the brain, they suppress REM sleep. But when serotonin molecules are not active, then REM sleep comes on online. Uh, and its role is to discharge emotions, both positive and negative, but stresses, worries and rumination from the previous waking phase so that we can wake up feeling refreshed the next day. However, if a person is stressed and anxious, worrying about unmet needs in their lives, unsurprisingly, they're going to dream a lot more and then wake up feeling exhausted. So what antidepressants do is to suppress REM sleep so that people have some relief from the symptoms of depression. However, there's a major drawback to relying upon antidepressants to do this. And that drawback is that if we suppress REM sleep, we prevent it from doing the job of discharging stress, worry, and negative emotion from the previous waking phase. And then that carries over into the next day. And that's what li lies behind some of the debilitating side effects that come with antidepressant use for many people. So if we want to understand how to treat depression, we need to understand that we need to work on reducing worrying, teaching people the skills to calm themselves down, and then working with them to identify unmet emotional needs and planning to address those, whether that's increasing physical activity, helping them to get back into work, helping them to learn relationship skills, or learning the effective skills to treat trauma as well. If you'd like to learn more about this, you can visit Suffolk Minds website and in particular our 20ZZ page, which gives you advice on getting better quality sleep. I also visit humangivens.com where much of the research that underpins the ideas I've shared in this short clip can be found. And I hope that you get the help that you need to address unmet emotional needs and navigate your way free from depression soon.